any of that, aren't we? Um, good afternoon. My name is Casey Shiley, and I am the Youth Services Consultant for the Florida Library Youth Program. For those of you who don't know me, um, I will say having a brainstorming session for adult services is sort of exciting for me because I don't typically get to work with most of you. So this is an opportunity for me to meet new library staff across Florida. Um, and so I do want to encourage you, if you have a webcam, please feel free to turn this on. Um, these brainstorming sessions are really intended to be more of a conversation, not a webinar. So it's not me just pushing information out to you all, but it's really all of you sharing information with one another. Um, and so I think these sessions are most successful when, when everybody is participating and sharing information. I do want to take a moment and let Katrina Harkness introduce herself to you because she is one of our newest team members here at Library Development. And I think she's going to be somebody that will be of particular interest to you all. So Katrina, I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Katrina Harkness. I'm the new adult learning consultant. I'm so excited to be here and working with Casey and getting a chance to meet all of you. Thank you so much. Um, and the really great thing about Katrina's position is it's kind of a new position for us. Um, it took some of the adult literacy work that one of our former consultants um, was doing and sort of has, has put on, you know, adult programming and other areas of interest to adult services people. Um, so whenever I send out my follow-up email to you all, I will also uh, include Katrina's email address that way if you want to reach out to her and maybe start talking with her um, I know she's eager to start meeting library staff in the field so I think she's gonna be a wonderful resource for all of you um, I do want to share one thing before we really just go to town on this brainstorming session um, I for those who did this with me last year this might look a little familiar to you but I have created a Google spreadsheet uh, Google Doc that is editable by all of you and I will share that link in the chat and I will also send it in the email. But this is really just a place for you all to share information with each other and be able to go back to. So we have a tab here for programming ideas. So um, if you have a really great program idea that you really love, especially, you know, that fits in with our summer theme, um, you can come share information about that. We have grab and go or make and take kit ideas if you're doing those for your adult patrons. Um, I know at this point we're starting year three of doing these grab and go kits. And so I, I know I'm hearing a lot that people are really looking for fresh ideas and new ideas. And so there's just information, you know, spots for you to share information, including cost, because I think that's, um, you know, good information for people to have. If you have external presenters that your library hires, that is just absolutely fantastic. Um, prize or incentive ideas, and then a spot for decoration ideas. Um, if you've been around long enough to be able to attend our in-person workshops when we were having those, um, you know, one of the beautiful things about those is that it provides everybody an opportunity to really get together and brainstorm with each other. And we're sort of missing that with with all the virtual um, that we're doing. And for those who might be new at this, we do typically do in-person workshops. We do one in sort of each of the, the regions of Florida for adult services. Um, so we're hoping to bring those back next year for 2023 summer. So um, that way you all will have that opportunity. And so with that, um, I would love it if you would take a minute and just put in the chat which library you're from and also let us know if this is either your first time doing a summer program for your adults, either you personally or if this is something new for your library that you're moving into because uh, I know that a lot of libraries have always done children's and youth programming but the, you know, bringing in adults for that summer reading, that Oceans of Possibility is also fairly new. Um, but the first question I want to throw out on the table is, will somebody, anybody, everybody share a program idea that you're planning to do this summer? I 
And again, you can unmute and talk. It's again, these are always better when my voice is not the only one. Um, but we also have chat available if you're not able to. I did have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to think of a program idea and I was wondering, is there like, like a national, are we trying to get adults to read? Are we just trying to get them to come to the library, um, share resources? Like, is that something that's up to each library to decide what their goal is? Um, I was just wondering if there's any ideas that the summer program itself has. Yes. Yeah, so I think ultimately, you know, I think it, it is a little different with kids because with kids and teens, we're talking about trying to overcome that summer slide, right, between school, you know, so they're not moving backwards with literacy. Um, so with adults, you know, I don't know that the adult portion of the program has like a national goal. I think really, um, you know, you at the local library, that's really sort of your decision, your choice based on what your community needs. But I love that question. And so I would love to sort of open that up to the group to say, you know, what is your goal with your adult summer program for those who've, who have that part figured out? Is it program participation? Is it Not sure if I'm muted. I can hear you. Oh, cool beans. Hi, I'm Mary Jane at Palm Harbor. We, we focus on the, the reading aspect. We have the little reading logs for them. We have weekly um, raffles where they, they read and put their book reviews in a little box. Then we have a box for each week that we do the summer and they get their name pulled at the end of the week and they might win excuse me, a $15 gift card to Publix or Walgreens or Wendy's or people in the neighborhood. I love that. And I was just, I saw your comment in the chat and you mentioned Plarn. Yes, yes, because you of to share about the that? plastic ocean and good old Moby Duck. I'm going the wrong way. Plarn is um, plastic yarn, and I was introduced to it at a turtle watch meeting um, down on St. Pete Beach. And the turtle watch guy had a, a cohort in crime, and she was a, a humongous plarner. She plarned homeless mats. She plarned mats for her kitchen doors. She plarned purses with flowers that she crocheted. Uh, anything you can do with yarn, you could do with plastic and keep it out of the, the ocean or the waterways or out of the little stomachs of birds and fish and turtles. Of course, they were focusing on the sea turtle. Showed us some really disgusting pictures of inside of a, you know, a dead sea turtle with plastic just wrapped around everything so nothing could flow uh, in their insides. Um, so you just take a, a plastic bag. It's really super simple. I have newspaper bags that come to the library every day. <laughs> so you just <clears throat> take your bag, fold it, find your scissors, take off the closed end, which you can save if you're going to make a stuffed animal, which you can also do. With Plarn, you can macrame, you can crochet, you can knit, you can weave. As I say, anything, and you just cut slices off your bag, then you make a tea with your bag, let's see if I'm, here we go, make a tea, and then pull the top through, and now you've got Plarn, and then you just keep adding it together, that same way, making the tea, roll up your Plarn like you would your yarn, so that it's all ready, and start knitting, crocheting, weaving, whatever. It's simple. Um, people like the fact that it's helping the environment. Um, we've been doing Plarn classes here for quite a while. 
and we did them at St. Pete Beach a long time ago. Um, but anyway, that's that's one of the programs I'll be doing this summer, just to make awareness and keep some of that plastic out of our critters. I love that. And Gabriella shared in chat that they also plan at Miami Dade. All right. And they donate the mats to uh, individuals experiencing homelessness. Yep. I have so several I people that. that do that. I love it. Got some great ideas. I'm trying to pick some out of the chat. But again, if you have a microphone, please feel free to unmute. Join in the, the conversation. So, Ellen, you said book folding. Do you are you able to unmute and tell us a little more about that? Hi there. I'm from Miami Dade Pinecrest Branch. We have a, a librarian uh, who is on staff who can take a donated hardback and use a template that she can find on um, the internet. I can ask her where. Uh, and it tells you where to fold down the pages from the top and the bottom. And she makes these beautiful creations. And then she adds uh, decorative paper to the inside of the book. She actually uses uh, labels to make it look like it's um, romance or mystery. She does a beautiful job and we've had programs with her and we will again. Uh, she also creates out of um, origami paper, twisted stars and twisted, what would you call them, Sharon? Uh, Snowflake-like uh, creations and everybody who sees them. We've got them decorated throughout the library so that people will take interest, ask about it, and then we direct them to the program that we'll have. So you use the, the project for decoration. That's how we started our plarning. We had the Country Walk branch staff sitting at the desk making the plarn balls and people would ask about it. And then we ended up having a large crochet circle and we would get people from the Congo and Haiti uh, all over the world. We got uh, Catholic churches and Girl Scout groups all getting involved. And I'll put in the chat the Flickr page that is full of pictures of the creation of the porn, the, um, even the end of the project where it's being handed out to the homeless. We, were, we ended up on WSVN, uh, Fox News on Christmas Eve. So then we started getting donations of plastic from across the country mailed to us. It was crazy. So that's some of the ideas between porn and paper folding. I love that. And thank you for putting that link in because I was just sitting, you must have read my mind or it was that obvious on my face because I was just thinking, I need her to send me pictures of this. I need to see this. Coming in a minute. I love it. Um, and I think going back to the question about goals for your adult summer participants, um, Julia shared that they usually do a combination of uh, reading challenges and then I'm assuming you said reading challenges and challenges. So I'm assuming those other challenges are more programmatic um, that encourages them to participate in programs. And then several people are talking about um, bringing in guest speakers from local aquariums or um, Jamie shared that a fish and wildlife biologist speaking about sustainable fishing And then Julie shared that they were going to do book passports for adults with stamps for books read from a curated collection built around fiction and nonfiction to do with the oceans. There may be a drawing for a gift card for those who complete the passports. Julie, do you have a mic? Can you tell us a little bit about what the passports look like and what you've made them out of? And I should, we have several Julies in here. So Julie Bryant, <laughs> you should probably specify. <laughs> Um, and if you don't have a mic, feel free to just share more information in the chat. Melissa shared that they've done some crochet plarn rugs there. Mm -hmm. 
has anybody run into any challenges yet with your program planning or have any sort of troubleshooting things that you want to throw out to the group? So we're here with 67 of our closest friends in the field. Melissa, how are you? Um, hey, I'm good. I'm having a hard time hearing. Oh no. Okay. Hold on. I think she's going to try to work on that. Um, Melody Tooley, I hope I just pronounced your name correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, Tooley is my cat's name, so that's kind of where my brain defaulted there. <laughs> um, said, I have off the hook knitting and crochet. We donate to Operation Gratitude every year for our troops, sending them red scarves during their annual red scarf challenge. I'm seeing reusable lunch bags. What are, so I know that, um, so Mary Jane had mentioned some incentives, just little gift cards. What other sorts of incentives do you find works with your adults for those who do them? Hi, this is Jamie at Ormond. Can you hear me? I can. Hey, we did um, a set of three gift baskets and we got donated nice hardcover or even some ARC um, books that we put in them. And then we have a maker space with a lot of crafts that we're planning to do for in-person programming starting now. And so we had samples that we had made from when we were doing YouTube videos and kind of included those in the baskets as a, hey, this is going to be upcoming programming, you know, things to look for. Um, and we also had our friends donate some gift certificates to our book sale room. Oh, that's very clever because a lot of libraries do have you know their friends of the library bookstore or something so offering a gift certificate there it's a great sort of internal partnership rhoda said that they've started a tic-tac-toe board for adult readers if they get three in a row then they win a gift certificate uh, the one for February includes squares such as read a book from the blind date with a book display or check out a rom-com, reread a favorite book. And uh, the prize is a gift certificate from a local new business, which is a candy shop. I mean, that seems very fitting for a February book tic-tac-toe. <laughs> I love it. Did it change anything? You just, I can kind of hear you if I'm very, very quiet. You just sound very, very far away. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, there you are. some of the challenges is uh, when like an outside presenter, if you're trying to bring in a guest speaker and they have different expectations for, you know, I will only do this if the whole room is fully vaccinated, wears masks, et cetera, et cetera. If it doesn't align with your your library's philosophy on, um, you know, on the rules and those kinds of COVID type things. So just communicate that, you know, any any of those issues before you get in something on the calendar and then the expectations are different on the presenter side. Yeah, talk about a, a new challenge that probably wasn't around three years ago, huh? Is anybody else running into this with presenters? what steps are you all taking have you are you approaching them differently now or are you bringing these up really far in advance or have something in writing that you give to them or how are you all handling this i talk to them in person uh, because i've had that happen a couple of times and it's like okay i'm learning from this um so i i bring it up when they first say, oh, I'd love to do a program for the library. I was like, well, 
are you interested in doing a Zoom program, or are you okay with an in-person, public, everybody's here kind of program? And sometimes they back right off and say, well, I, I don't do Zoom and I don't think I'm ready for people. It's like, okay, so why don't you just call me back when you're, <laughs> when you're ready for one or the other, and we'll add you to our program list. <laughs> Hey, Casey, do you mind um, putting the link to the spreadsheet in the chat? Rebecca's asking for it. Absolutely. I will grab that. Does anybody, while well, I'm doing that, does anybody else want to share how they're sort of working around the presenter challenge? And I, I will say, too, that there are folks who are sharing um, they are sharing ideas for presenters as well. Um, so I'll also oh. take this moment to say that I will be sending the chat along with the recording just because, especially during these brainstorming sessions, I feel like there is just as much wonderful, valuable information in that chat as there is talking about it. So um, yeah, so don't feel like you have to suddenly start bookmarking 20 different links because it'll all come to you. Oh, hi, this is Kristen from uh, Broward County. And I think the biggest challenge for us in the smaller branch is that we're still on temporary hours. You know, we haven't gone back to weekends or we haven't gone back to nights. So it's really limiting the hours and the days that I can actually have a program for adults that could make it to the library. That's, but that can't really fix that myself. Yeah, I wish I had a magic wand to make that better for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know between that and just staff shortages, I think, um, you know, a lot of libraries are having a hard time feeling like they can offer the same amount of programs and opportunities that they have in years past. Um, and so it's, if you're anything like me, I tend to hold myself to a really high standard. And so when I have to sort of lower what I'm doing, I I internalize that. So just in case you need to hear somebody else say this, it is okay if you are still in that situation where you are just having to, to cut down on what you're offering. You know, many areas are still living in crisis or we're still just very tumultuous. And so it's, I'm the kind of person where I, it's quality over quantity. You know, if you can only do five or six really just fantastic programs versus trying to do 15 or 20 or 25, you know, just be kind to yourself about what you can do. Um, because you all are doing amazing work, even if it's one or two or three, as opposed to the 23 you might have been used to. You are still making impact. You're leaving impact on your communities. And Julie Bryant shared that some patrons really enjoy writing book reviews. Do any other libraries do that with your adults? Do you have your adults write book reviews for other patrons? Intentionally. I don't mean the patrons that leave little notes in the books when they return them. <laughs> Seeing a lot of conversation about book bingos as well. And then I know further up in the chat, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, um, had mentioned that their library, they have a really hard time sort of engaging adults, especially with the reading portion. So for those of you who've had great success in reaching your adults, um, share your secrets with us. What what outreach or marketing have you found really successful for drawing in those adult patrons to participate? Can I, um, am I, can everyone hear me? Yes. So in regards to the book reviews, um, in, my last, in my last position, we had a built-in feature into Beanstack where patrons are able to leave some book reviews for like an extra ticket um, for the grand prizes. So that was one way for us to add that feature into the, um, into the app that most of us are using nowadays. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love it. I have a, a lot of teen library staff who use that too, because um, they'll offer up uh, volunteer hours to some of their teens for doing book reviews as well. And then Melody shared that in the past, our patrons have loved our trivia games and prizes. Music trivia is a fun class. Melody, how do you set up your trivia? I know there's about a million and one different ways. Some people use PowerPoint, some people are avid Kahoot users. Um, Kahoot does have a free version if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Melody said the music trivia program was in person. And Nancy said, we have found that during the past two years, many small local book clubs have been created. So now we're looking at offering a program on how to run a successful book discussion group. That's really creative, Nancy. And I feel like that's really responding to the changes that you're seeing in your community. And then Mary said, here in Plantation, we're challenged, but we're doing outreach with two local community centers. They have been very open to working with us. Mary said, for a kickoff, I wanna say that World Ocean Day is June 6th this year. And I did, um, I will, um, make sure I link it to, I created a calendar of sort of celebration and awareness days through May, through like the beginning of August that are kind of related to the theme. Um, you know, July is usually sh the big old shark week. Um, I don't think they've announced the exact dates yet or if they have, I've missed it. Um, but that's usually in, in July. Um, we also have, you know, water safety months and uh, there's a lot of really great, there's a sea monkey day. <laughs> so I'll make sure that I, uh, I link you all to where that calendar is, just if it's something helpful as well. Because who doesn't love to celebrate a sea monkey? So right now I'm just sort of um, scrolling through chat, but again, if you have a program idea or a marketing idea, I feel like that's, a, at least from the youth services staff I work with, that's usually one of the big questions that I get asked a lot. And it doesn't matter if people have been doing this for one year or 10 years. They're always looking for marketing ideas. Does anybody, I did have this question come up. Um, does anybody partner with your local transportation if you have local transportation? So if you have a local trolley, local bus to provide free uh, transportation to the library during summer or during any other time of the year? Melody, you said yes all year. And is Melody, is that something that your library set up or was that just something that your local county or city decided to do on their own? Local, you believe? Okay. Thank you. No, not really no one. Oh, I heard somebody. We're, uh, we're having this issue. Not sure if somebody was trying to speak or accidentally unmuted. Um, Hyacinth said Broward County has free community buses that go to many of the libraries. And then Mary said, we have some local senior resident buses who bring people, not so much during the pandemic though. 
So that might be an option um, for some of you if you're looking for ways to expand is to consider, you know, if you have some sort of local transportation, uh, maybe reaching out for a partnership opportunity. And Julie said, Brevard County Libraries partners with Space Coast Area Transit to offer kids with current library cards summer bus rides. So what sort of, um, you know, in, in developing a summer program, you know, based around this CSLP theme, the Collaborative Summer Library theme, um, you know, oceanography, oceans of possibility this year, what sort of um, additional resources would you all find helpful to help you prepare and help you plan outside of bringing back in-person workshops? We are working on it. You all are a quiet bunch. I'm not used to this. <laughs> uh, Nadine, you like the online spreadsheet. I had a lot of very positive feedback about doing that last year. So I hope people use it for sure. Mary said some sort of digital gallery platform would be great. We could offer art or poster contests that they can upload their work. So like you need like a physical digital space that was probably very contradictory. <laughs> uh, Ruben said some incentives via partnerships with corporate partners. Haley, oh Haley, you're locked out at Google Docs. Um, what I'll do because I'm. I, I have this issue with some of my other use services with, with my use services folks too. Um, and, and I mean, I'm, it's so funny because with department of state, we are locked out of Gmail, but we can access Google docs. Um, and I don't know if that was intentional or not. Um, so what I will do is I will try to, um, you know, every so often maybe pull the spreadsheet and actually save it as an Excel spreadsheet and just try to email it out. So at least you can get the information, um, even if you can't access the living document. Um, Nadine said corporate partners can make things tricky. Nadine, have you had any success with corporate partners that have resulted in either incentives or something else that you were able able to use? Oh, Ruben said I have to put out I have to reach out to corporate HQs to put a table in front of a Publix. Go figure. Might be a benefit of partnering with local businesses. If you have a good, strong local business vibe in your community. Oh, Subway for free cookies. Yeah, they have good cookies too. Oh, Nadine said, when I was the director of a rural independent library, the businesses that supported the library were expected to be used when the library had to do things. Yeah, I can see where that is definitely a, a pressure that one might not want to tiptoe into. So I'm curious, other than, you know, doing marketing and outreach just generally, do any of you um, target certain parts of your populations or specifically go to uh, certain community, you know, either centers or anything like that to really try to reach specific groups of people? Nobody. 
no local senior centers. Kimberly said we have the local ARC gateway groups come to visit the library once a month. We usually do a craft with them. Kim, do you have your microphone? Can you sort of explain to us what the ARC gateway group is? Sure, this is Kim. Um, so the ARC gateway group is um, this, a, a politically incorrect acronym because um, it's for the Association of Retarded Citizens. Um, but it is generally the senior group. We have had their younger group come, but we have two different groups coming from two different centers. They come at the same time and we just provide an outing for them. It's a real treat for them because they are like an adult daycare. So they come to the library and we usually have a craft activity for them and um, we do it year round. And this year we're for the first time going to expand it through the summer. And um, like for Christmas, they were really excited we had Santa come. But we tried really carefully to not, not do things that we necessarily would do with the kids, but to, to be mindful that they're, they're grown ups, even though they have limited abilities. So we try to do different kinds of crafts, paint. They love painting. They love working with stamps and markers and things like that. Some of them don't have a lot of fine motor skills. So we have to be really cognizant of their ability level but also to making sure that we don't water it down to the point that it becomes insulting, if that makes sense. Um, so there's a balance there. And we have one super talented librarian who is just full of ideas and um, she's always generating, generating ideas for us to do. Um, like we, one of the latest projects and we'll do it again in May in preparation for the summer is getting canvas bags and we let them stamp them or use Sharpies and then do like chromatography with alcohol to make it to run. So it makes like flowers and things like that. So we tried different things with this group. We play music. Um, sometimes we read poetry or stories to them, short stories. So it's been a really good outreach. And we normally have about 25 come to a session. And we do it once a month. I love that. Mary said in Plantation, they reached out to senior centers, parks, and community centers. Um, and Haley said, Dep yes, dependent on the program, but it's essential to do that now to get attendees, especially for online programs. And Julia said, one of our branches used to go to a local retirement community with a traveling library for anyone that couldn't make it in, um, but she doesn't know if they've started that back up yet. Mary said that she's partnered with the Fort Lauderdale History Museum to get speakers and audience members virtually. Um, and I know that uh, one thing Katrina has actually worked on as well, and we're, um, we're going to work on getting some information out, is she's been in contact to try to find different speakers, bureau, speaker bureaus that really align with this theme. And so, you know, a lot of our colleges and universities have marine science or oceanography departments and uh, you know, so they have speakers available through that. So we'll also make sure to get that out as well. So Ellen asked, can you further explain chromatography? So Kim, that is a question for you. Okay, sure. Yeah, I can. Um, so a number of different paints and markers like Sharpies, they will actually separate their colors if you expose them to like rubbing alcohol. That's what we use is the Sharpies. Um, you can do it also too with like folded uh, coffee filters where you dip one end in paint or you color one end in paint and dip it into alcohol. Um, it will separate the colors and the different colors will travel a different distance through ever whatever medium you're using, either the canvas bag or the coffee filter. So that, that's the idea of chromatography. You're actually separating the colors in the marker that you're using. So it makes a pretty rainbow like design. And they like that. They think that they think it's a lot of fun because they can they can manage the eyedroppers. And, and do that, so. Art um, magic. Th this is Haley, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, so some of the um, partners that we've worked with, uh, community partners is one, the um, League of Women Voters. They very frequently have different committees. So there's, you know, environmental committee, and you can approach them and see what they can do for you. 
And then another um, uh, successful partnership that we've had for online programming is the um, Aging and Disability Resource Center. I think there's one in each area throughout uh, Florida. And they regularly have programs anyway that are grant funded, but I think the local one was perhaps struggling with getting attendees. So we partnered up with them and they created a series specifically for the library. So they actually deliver it, but we have staff that will do the introduction, um, you know, the welcoming, because it is a collaboration and tell them about a relevant library service and so on. And then also, you know, at the end, we share upcoming programs and that. So they, we both benefit. They get more attendees. We get to promote library and, um, you know, that's been really, you know, a, a great find. We've done programs on, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, um, and also uh, caregivers programs and things like that. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. I think strong partnerships can really make so much difference in our communities. And Katrina was sharing some information in the chat for some of those speakers. Um, and she did also point out that some of these presentations are also available in Spanish and French Creole. So if you're looking at offering, like, you know, if you have some, some language needs for your programming, that might also be an option as well. So does anybody have, I know we've talked about programs in sort of a broad sense. Um, does anybody have, uh, you know, any craft ideas that you, that if you haven't already shared that you are thinking of doing related to the theme? Is anybody still only doing virtual programming too? I realize I'm throwing multiple questions out there at the same time. And Haley, I see that your hand went up. Were you wanting to speak again or was that from earlier? That was from earlier. Okay. Melody said something with seashells. Yes. And Haley also shared uh, that NOAA Fisheries also has speakers available. And Sarah was also going to mention NOAA. We also, I don't know if you all know this, but um, through within Department of State, the Division of Historical Resources also has um, like a sunken ship trail. Um, so especially for those of you, I know we have a few folks here, especially who are in the Panhandle Big Bend area. They have, you know, sort of this whole trail that goes there. Um, but they have a lot of information about shipwrecks as well that are right around the Florida coast. So very Florida centric. Um, you know, who doesn't love a good treasure hunting sunken ship story? As long as you're not the one on the sunken ship. Haley said a watercolor painting class of fish. And Jamie said we have a staff member doing a weaving lab. He will be doing fish nets and palm frond fish. Jamie, that's amazing. I was trying to find resources for making your own net and it felt so far beyond me. <laughs> On the one hand, I'm looking at these videos going, they make this look really easy, but I'm also like, I'm pretty sure I can't do that. Um, so the fact that you have a colleague, Elena, yes, I will um, I will send that shipwreck website when I send my follow-up email as well. It really is very neat. And they have some beautiful photography and videos. Um, it really is stunning. Um, some of the resources I'm working on collecting now that I think span any age is underwater photography. And, um, you know, our Florida memory has um, a lot of uh, Mozart's, who was a very big pioneer in underwater photography here in, oh, well, I mean, he was just a pioneer, but based out of Florida. And so we, um, our archives, 
they acquired his collection a couple years back. And so a lot of it you can view on our Florida Memory web page as well. Um, so it really is amazing because you get his photography, but then you also kind of get like photography of the photography. So seeing how they were taking pictures back in the 50s. Um, and, and that is probably an area that Katrina could speak to a lot more than I could because she came to us from Florida Memory. Um, but underwater photography might also be sort of a fun program idea because even if you're not located near water, there's resources out there about how to take faux underwater photography, so how to fake it. Um, yeah. And Mary said rock painting with a new type of fluid that makes the rock look like surface on it. Mary, okay, so I, you're, you're on camera. Do you want to unmute and tell us a little bit more about this new fluid? Yeah, the rock? Sure. I, I just was scrolling along one day in Pinterest and there they were. I was looking at rocks because that was one of our great programs, uh, rock painting. We combine it with the English Cafe, so we had this captive audience and others that wanted to come could come. Um, we had some that were artists, so they were helping like little uh, teacher assistants in the room to demonstrate some different techniques for doing the painting. That was one year. But yeah, this fluid looks like it, it could be a mixture of oil and other chemicals that when you take like a wide plastic bin and then put what might be an old, uh, baking rack over top of the rack the plastic thing then you place your rocks on top of that and then you're pouring this uh paint so whatever uh you know when once pouring it it kind of captures that and it eventually dribbles down and becomes static when it dries so it looked looked like amazing paint that's it <laughs> We have links going up in the chat from all sorts of resources. Again, I will share the chat with you uh, just because I think that's going to make it easier. <laughs> uh, Melissa said a new coral reef was discovered in the twilight zone near Tahiti. Random news. I love random news, especially when it's related to our summer theme. Although I'm impressed that they were able to get in and get out of the twilight zone to tell us that they discovered new coral reef. Oh, Mary had a great suggestion. Uh, local dive stores could show diving equipment. Do some sort of a program on diving. And Miriam said, if passive programming is popular, many zoos and scientific groups have live streams of oceans and ocean animals. I know the Florida Aquarium definitely has a lot of that. Um, this is Haley. Uh, to that diving uh, program, uh, we have we are working on uh, we're partnering with a local dive store, and we'll have one of them come in to do a presentation on, you know, kind of discover scuba diving. So they'll bring in all the equipment and that. Um, and someone mentioned fishing, and I was thinking that would be another great follow-up to the discover scuba diving, discover fishing. Um, uh, so I'm going to look into that as well. So that's a good idea, I think, especially in South Florida. Although everyone may already know how to fish. I don't know. I don't know. I think you get so many people moving down there from other parts of the country that you probably have folks there who could use it. Or people like me who haven't fished since they were, you know, a kid or a teenager. And don't remember some of the finer parts of loading a line or... I think that's a great idea. And I'm hoping somebody in here will know this. This is, I'm trying to pull a fuzzy detail out of my brain. Um, I think it's fish and wildlife will also donate fishing poles. I know that I've heard of some libraries getting them at no cost from fish and wildlife, and then they've been able to circulate them. Um, I will do some digging for y'all to see if I can find that information. So if that's something you're interested in, um, 
because I know that we've had some libraries get them and then like I said they add them to their their library of things and what a great time to launch something like that if your library has been wanting to and if it's free free is like the magic word right <laughs> I was thinking about doing a social media thing about taking pictures with a book on the beach that could be on a bingo card or anything. We haven't had a lot of success getting people to actually participate in our social media, like comment instead of just look at it, but. Um, I have a comment on that. Uh, last summer we tried um, something along the, I think it was last summer, um, how to make your pet an Instagram or an Insta star. And uh, so I've just thought uh, when you mentioned the, um, you know, the fake underwater photography, I was thinking, you know, maybe we could do something along those lines that, you know, related to uh, social media that way. And that brings in crowds that may not normally come in. And I'm on the um, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission right now. Um, they do have a couple of uh, license-free fishing days um, for fish, for, and some of them fall over the summer. Um, so license-free freshwater days is the second consecutive Saturday and Sunday in June. Oh, I'm not sure why. Why all the webcams went away. Um, I'll share this link in the chat. Um, and then there's a license free saltwater days. So th those of you who are on the coast, the first consecutive Saturday and Sunday in June. Um, so if you're wanting to do some of these, um, you know, fishing programs, that, you know, that might be a great opportunity sort of leading up to it. You know, we have these free fishing days before we get there. Let's do a, you know, let's have a program about it. So we are down to six minutes. Thank you all for all of these resources that you have been sharing. Um, it's one reason why I love these brainstorming sessions, just because it turns into such a great flow of ideas and a great exchange. Um, we do, oh, Sarah said, hoping to have our library art gallery exhibit for summer reading match the theme, either underwater or oceans, possibly photography. Sarah, do you have a mic? Can you tell us sort of how you go about setting that up and if you just sort of open it up to the public or are you partnering with a local art agency? Hey, Siri, are you still there? We lost your video. I see Sarah's having trouble getting her webcam on. There you are. You have to see back. Yay. You're muted, Casey. <laughs> Casey, it looks like you're still muted. Oh, I am. And I was over here muted trying to tell Sarah that she was muted. Um, I can't hear you though. Um, but, or if you just want to share it in the chat, that's, that's fine too. I was going to say, I have to admit y'all, I have known Sarah since I was maybe 12 because her baby sister and I were 
like this <laughs> as kids. So it's such a small world. Um, and Sarah is an artist herself. So when it comes to art programs, she, she is a great resource to have as well. Um, but yeah, I would love to know if you're just sort of opening that up to the general public um, or are you working with some of the local art art groups? Oh, Miriam said that um, she's been playing with an idea for an ocean theme program, um, maybe for teens or adults of looking at old maps, cartographers used to draw sea creatures on the edges of the maps when they did not know what lay beyond the land they could draw. Melody, you know, it's funny that you said, or Miriam, it's funny that you said that because I have also been putting together some resources about that very thing. And Katrina has been helping me on it because we've been pulling out maps from Florida memory. Um, but yeah, they would draw picture, you know, pictures of the mermaid monsters and the other sea monsters to warn other fishermen not to go that way. And so that's really fun. It's also funny, I think, to see how we envision something like a mermaid now and then how they envisioned a mermaid back in like 1842 and to see how how different they are. So Sarah said, I usually schedule the art galleries. So I've been keeping an eye out for local artists that fit the theme. There are a ton of phenomenal photographers and sometimes painters that just do ocean scenes. Marian said, I'd like to show them as proof that mermaids exist because they do. Well, yes, we house some in Wikiwachi, don't we? Um, and Mary said, to raise awareness against ocean and plastics, have an artist do an interactive art installation at the library using plastics found on the beach. All right, well, we are at one minute. Oh, Brent, you had your hand open, uh, not open. Your hand up. Words are hard. Um, do you, you want to pop me? in here? Can you hear me? Or yes. Oh, okay. Um, we had done a program with Miami Dade Public Libraries. Um, different libraries had done it, but it's the a Touch the Bay program, and it's part of our Parks and Open Spaces Department. That they have a conservation center in Key Biscayne, and they they do it in Zoom, but they can also bring the animals and the wildlife to the branches themselves. But it's a really great conservation message. Um, the kids love it because they get to see some of the endangered animals and unique ecosystems that are in South Florida that don't exist even in the rest of Florida, let alone the, the world. Um, and I know he's really good at Zoom programming, so he, he can do it for any library around the state, you know, without a problem if, if you set it up with them. And they're really friendly. It's a great program. Out of all the th things that I saw, it's one of the best values for money um, on any of the cost or anything. It's, it's really good. Um, and the kids absolutely loved it. So, and they walked away with like what they could do next to help save the uh, the oceans, basically. So it ties into summer reading perfectly. You know. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right, we are at three o'clock on the dot. I hate to stop the conversation, but I know too that um, you know everybody has other meetings or desks to get to. Uh, the wonderful thing is that this conversation doesn't have to stop. We have that Google Doc so you can continue to add in resources. Um, and we now have Katrina. So you all have an adult services person here at the Bureau as well. Um, and so I know she's excited to really jump in with you all as well. Um, and Brent did share that information in the chat as well. So thank you everybody so much. I'm sorry we got a little glitchy here at the end, but I guess if we we're going to deal with glitches. At least it was at the end. Um, Y'all have a wonderful rest of your week and a rest, you know, the rest of your planning. If you need me or Katrina, you will have our contact information shortly. Thank you, everybody. Bye.